Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to implement the shuffling functionality for our cards. Alright, so, so far the card, um, the deck of cards or the memory game is completed, but there is a big problem with that. We know where every image exists, right? So if we just click on them, we can and see all of them because they are nicely arranged next to each other. So if even if I refresh, they're going to stay in their, that was a misclick, they're going to stay in their own spot, right? But this is not what we want. We want to surprise our users, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function and we are going to call them shuffle, very generic, right? And what do we want to do here? Now, we want to iterate over all of our cards, so we are going to grab our cards and we are going to say that for each, and we are going to run a function. This Writing this function here is not the optimum way of doing it. We could use an arrow function, but, you know, I, I've just used it a few times. I do not want to, like, really, really focus on arrow functions, though they are a better, in these sort of scenarios, they're a better choice than our regular functions. Arrow functions, they are new additions to ES6, uh, JavaScript, or ES uh, to officially ES2015 edition of JavaScript, all right? But uh, we are going to start using them all over the place whenever we officially study them, like in theory, all right? So we need here a loop variable, which is going to be cards, card, and um, first off, we need to we need to come up with a way that according to that method we can shuffle the cards now uh, if i go back to our css and uh, if i come here this is our memory game right this is the container for our memory game and this is our memory game so inside the memory game we have 12 divs and each of these divs is actually a memory card that's why we have 12 cards, right? So let me uh, collapse um, all of them. So these 12s, these 12 cards, they're actually 12 flex items because the container is has has a display value of flex. So all of them, whenever we set we initialize a flex container or a flex model, all of the flexbox properties they are at our disposal to use. So we have a an order property, which is a flex items property, right, for flex items. And the order property basically is responsible for the order of items which are laid out on the screen. So uh, naturally or by default, all of them have an order of zero. So if you, the, the, uh, if you go towards the top left uh, part of the screen, they are going to uh, go to zero and less than that or zero and negative numbers and if you go towards the bottom right they're gonna go towards the positive number so if you were to have an order of negative one for uh, this uh, for for example for an let's just so if you were to have an order of negative one for this cat it would move from this position all the way to here and if you would have an order of like let's say position like like let's say uh, an order of like two for this bear or one, then it would it would move all the way to here. So bigger numbers, just in short, bigger numbers, they move towards the bottom right and smaller numbers, they move towards the top left, depending on whether or not they're negative or positive. So think of it like this. So we can use this order property to come up with a way to shuffle our cards. And uh, for that, we need to get a random number, uh, number. And we know how we can do that. So first off, I'm going to create a variable in which I'm going to store that random number. Okay, we need to store it somewhere. So I'm going to call it random positions. And it is going to be math dot floor now the floor method is going to give us an integer right we need an integer because why why do we need an integer the reason for that is we are going to use our math dot random so where is our math dot random 
R. This is the method that we are going to use. Now, math.random is going to give us uh, a value. Uh, here it says, uh, okay, it is going to give us a number between 0 and 1. But this is going to be a decimal number. We want an, a, a whole integer. That's why we are going to say math.floor. It is going to give us a complete integer. And we multiply it by 12 because we have 12 cards. Simple. Now, the number that com comes out of this, what do we want to do with that? First off, let's find out what, what are the numbers that is going to come out from this random positions. So we have successfully implemented the random and we have stored it inside this variable. So now let's go ahead and let's access that variable and let's see what is the value stored inside this. So uh, if I click on it, so this is, uh, well, this, is, this function is not called. And how, how do we call this function? We know that whenever you create a function, this is another cool idea in JavaScript I'm just going to write the name here and I'm going to explain to you guys what this means. It, uh, whenever you, you create a function or you define a function, you need to call it for that function to wake up and to do something. But we have no, we have no good way of calling this function. We want whenever the page is, is reloaded, we want to call this function. So we are going to convert this function into an iffy. And you heard it right. It is an iffy, and we we grab in the entire function, we open parentheses, and we open parentheses at the end of that function as well. Now this function has turned into has been converted into an iffy. An iffy is an immediately invoked function expression. It means that the function is called immediately after its definition. Now this function is called. So whenever you want to combine the function call sorry, the function definition with the function call, like instantly, you, you, you just create an iffy. It's called an iffy, an immediately invoked function expression. Or think of it like this, immediately woken up function. Okay, so now whenever we refresh the page, we see an iffy. So if I refresh, refresh the page, we see all these numbers. See? We see all the, these are all random numbers and we are going to assign all these random numbers to each of these cards and then the order of these cards is going to change resulting in a wonderful shuffle. All right, so let's reload the page. See, each time we get different numbers, each time we are going to get a different number. We are not going to get 12 and we are not going to get minus one. That's what we did there. Okay, so we are always going to get from 0 all the way to 11, right? So we are going to get that. Now, now that we have successfully grabbed these random numbers for our random position, how can we apply them to, um, to those uh, cards that we have? So we are going to say card dot tap into the world of style and I don't know why it does that style and we are going to get the order property and we are going to set it to what to random positions that's it so let's see now everything is random okay and we can we can check it out for ourselves so this is bear it's there but this is dog but originally these two bears they were in the same spot so that's incorrect let's go ahead and check out this is the bird check out these two we have a cat and uh, we have so this the dog is right here so this is our first now i'm going to solve this memory game of course it is going to take some time but uh, in the process of solving it we are going to check for any corners any issues any bugs that this application might have so let's click on this so we cannot click on a third card that's a good thing if i double click i cannot still cannot click so where is the other hamster I think this cat is here, this bear is here. Think, yep, there is the hamster. Come on, this is the bird, nope. I think this was the bird, yeah. And voila. So now you guys can see, we have bear, dog, cat, hamster. If I refresh the page, this order should change. And you can see that every card, all of the cards, they're shuffled. 
So if I change, we have cat, curious cat, bird, and dog and hamster. If I refresh, we are gonna get an again hamster refresh. We are gonna get a bird. So each time we refresh, um, the order property is going to change the order of our HTML elements or our cards resulting in a different deck of cards that we can work with. So, and this is going to be it for this project and this chapter. I hope you have enjoyed it and see you guys in the next one.